And we're live, ladies and gentlemen. Who are we kidding? We're live, gentlemen. <laughs> um, and lady. I don't know. Your mom might be watching. It's possible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's your, possible. your mom's yeah. probably watching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we've got a great show for you guys today. Actually, we've got a great show for you guys today. Jake did the WAN show document. So other than that, it's a great show. So we're going to go super tangent off the dock and yeah, just make it we're work. We're just not even going to use the dock because yeah. I'm all about demoralizing the people who work here. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And, you know, as much fun as it is to demoralize James, it had kind of lost its... It's shine. Yeah. But, but you need now, a new person every yeah, once in a while. Every once in a while, we want someone new to work on the WAN Show doc yep. so that we can crush their soul. Yeah. Uh, so today it's Jake. Um, got Actually, oh, 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 this is cool. So topics today. We're going to probably kick oh. it off with impressions of the Samsung Galaxy S9. See, that's okay. actually an S8, but you'd never know the difference. Yeah. I was like... Other than the deep wow. red skin. Um, and like the very minor camera differences on the back. Flippy, the burger flipping robot, started working at Caliburger in California. We'll go through what a burger flipping robot means and how effective it was. What the else source for that article was Master Disaster, so I'm assuming that Jake wrote it himself. Um, also, there's uh, Newegg customers in Connecticut receiving tax bills because Newegg didn't charge them sales tax. <laughs> Sorry, Jake. <laughs> and uh, modders were able to put Coffee Lake CPUs into Skylake and KB Lake motherboards uh, to a well, certain degree of success, which is actually kind of crazy. So why don't we roll the intro and we'll get on with the show where... Theoretically, we'll talk about all those things that we just talked about that we're going to talk about, but actually, we're probably going to end up talking about something else. We sometimes do it. We got that Squarespace. We got that fresh food. We got that savage jerky. Hooray. Yeah, baby. All right. So we're going to kick things off with the most important news this week. Linus Cat Tips, the YouTube channel you um, that has videos of my cat, including this fantastic one right here that I uploaded yesterday. Uh, it's got my cat. Uh, I was trying to, well, you can probably figure out based on the tile <laughs> tile back wall there what I was trying to do. So I was trying to do that. Right. And, um, yep. you know, the cat decided that he had already done that, needed somewhere to wipe his butt. Nice. Um, decided yep. on my hair. Um, so this is the, the 100,000 100, subscriber update for Linus Cat Tip. It's got, got 120,000 views. Best performing video on this channel of all time. <laughs> and the big news here, though, is that Linus Cat Tips, the most important channel at Linus Media Group, has crossed 100,000 subscribers. I'm surprised you have a B minus. Meaning, meaning that, well, it's probably just because of the last couple of days. Right, okay. Where it went from 85,000 subscribers. Well, okay, we should, go, we should probably go all the way back to here. So this is when the NCIX bankruptcy auction vlog hit Floatplane. Okay, yeah. So we got, you know... 1500 or so subscribers like normally it actually does grow like let's look at the full monthly statistics here social blade is a great site for creeping on youtube channels by the way you guys it's awesome you can like see how many subs they get how many views they get this is bs don't trust it believe me um like i mean any number that's like well somewhere between 77 cents and 12 dollars imagine you were able to pay for things like that. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine you walked into McDonald's and it's like, yeah, super value menu. It costs anywhere between, uh, you know, 69 cents and 18 bucks. Yeah. Like, oh, uh, you don't know until you're checking out. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, you know what? Hold on a second. I just gave him a bad idea. This is, I should not have said anything. Microtransaction <laughs> restaurant, loot box, <laughs> loot box, the restaurant. Oh, oh. it's actually brilliant. So you don't know. So you take away all the like. Ugh, I don't know what to pick off the menu because you don't. Well, no, because it's. Wait, yeah. So you get whatever. Or you pick you get. like one of three different tiers of loot boxes. And so you might end up. Yeah. So you get the the five dollar loot box. The or 10, it's like or the like 30. single serving, double serving, or like three course meal loot box. Wow. 
And so some, I'd probably go. So some people are gonna because like gaming themed establishments are totally yeah. a thing. Yeah. For the most part, bars, I guess. Yeah, there's a lot of gaming bars. Okay, but the gaming, the loot box restaurant. Where you go in and like sometimes you're gonna get like a sort of like adequate meal, and then other times you're gonna get like the freaking you know diamond armor whatever crap is popular horse armor. Sure. Yeah. 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 Edition. Yeah. 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 And I don't it know how comes many people with, are gonna get horse armor anymore. And it good and, reference. Uh, sh- good reference though. Shut up. Good reference though. Shut up. I, I like hate it. you. Great game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and then sometimes it'll you'll spend like a yeah. considerable amount on a meal. And it'll literally just be like a day old McDonald's. Uh, okay, no, I don't know about that. <laughs> but you, you gotta but add like, some junk. No, in. you'd either get <laughs> okay. You could get like an adequate meal, or you could get like like something really nice, mm-hmm. and it like comes with actual like gamer loot. Like it could come with like an amiibo. Okay. Oh, oh, right. Interesting. Or like T-shirts. Because remember, the thing about loot boxes is that you're, you already know you're kind of paying too much. So no, the base meal is already decent. There's but a... then you might get loot. And so effectively, yeah. the people who just get a meal are subsidizing the people who get like something yeah, freaking awesome. Yeah, so you spend awesome. a little bit more overall, but there's a chance that you're going to get some cool games. Just like a loot box. Yeah. I like that. That's probably way more reasonable than Dale McDonald's. Um, there's a, there's a, way more there's, reasonable. <laughs> there's a restaurant downtown Vancouver. There's two of them, same name. One of them is more just a like very small hole in the wall place than the other one's like a big establishment, but they're both called Stormcrow. I think one of them is Tavern and one of them is something else. Anyways. Okay, we're getting can... kind of crapped on. It's called a kid's meal. The loot is a toy. <laughs> Whatever, man. This no, is for no, adults. No, no, no. This is for adults, which and they're makes like it a proper, totally different full idea. Meals. Yeah. And it, you might get you don't get T-shirts in kids meals. He's just talking about yeah. am- amiibos and T-shirts. This is like nicely branded stuff, not like some super That's cheapo. Right, totally thing. different. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, Stormcrow. Uh, I believe you can roll a D20. Okay. And depending on what the D20 results in, you get a different. I think it's a shot. Okay. I'm sure. not sure. Yeah, and then okay. if you get a 20, I don't remember. Something cool happens. Uh, I don't know. People are complaining. The camera's tilted, and like to my eye, it is. Noticeably tilted. Okay, uh, is it just tilting over time? No, I don't think so. Because oh, didn't we check it before the stream? What's the point of hiring professional camera people anyway? Does that seem better? I don't know. It's hard to tell without me there. And like part of it's like, is this shelf on an angle? Yes, it is. Yeah. And like we're shooting at it from an angle. Yeah. So, you know. So people probably are just attributing that. I think we're just going to... That's noticeably better. We're going to roll with that. Okay, cool. You know, there's a little too much headroom. Jake, can you adjust the headroom down a little bit? Maximum headroom. You got this. You got this. All right. Um, What the heck were we talking about? It seemed important. Uh, The boxes. Oh, no, it was really important. Linus cat tips. Oh, okay. Right. So um, (laughs) what happened? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened here was next it hit YouTube, and this nothing channel went from 85,000 to 160,000 subscribers in three days. So you doubled. Nice. Which is actually more like two days because it was like the evening of the 7th. And it is now not yet even the evening of the 9th. Um, <laughs> and the reason, did you watch the NCIX yeah. bankruptcy vlogs? Yeah, yeah. So you saw the part where ultimately, okay, I've got some people saying that it was the wrong move to give the guy, well, not give it to him. I mean, he bid for it, like he won it in the auction, but to sort of let it go. Do you think it was the wrong move? I think what you maybe should have done, because you knew this, What maybe not to the scale, maybe you thought more scale, I don't know, but you knew you would pass 100K. Yeah, but I also knew that Linus Cat Tips was gonna end up with 100,000 subscribers eventually anyway. Yeah. So, All I would have to do is, is do one shout out for it. I could have yeah. done it at any moment yeah, over yeah, the yeah. last three years. Yeah. yeah. Just like that. This is accelerating it. Yeah. You could have got it from him with the idea that, like, hey, I'll get you the cat tips one. Oh, that's interesting. Or I didn't think you could have used your contacts instead of using his contacts to try to be like, hey, let's get him the freaking button. You know, I didn't think of that at all. I should have totally done that. I yeah. should have totally been like, look, I want the NCIX tech tips one, but tell you what. Because you don't ultimately care. We, no, I should have just created like a troll. Like, extra one 
Yes. It should have yes. been like. Yes. Yeah. And you should have named it almost identical to his channel with like a period or something. Yeah. So that you like can't really tell. Yeah. And just been like, all right, guys, let's get this dude. Because you got you got eighty something thousand. Yeah. You could have made. I it. didn't think of that at all. Why do I even ask you these things? So now you need to make NCX dot. Or like use a weird character for the eye or something <laughs> and do it again. And then we need to get it again. I gotta tell you the... Okay, so first of all, all the people saying that like he didn't deserve it because he's a top 10 channel or something or he probably bought his subscribers. What are you talking about? Like the guy uploaded a lot of videos. I never even, I didn't. Yeah, no, people are like, they're like mad that like a crappy top 10 channel got the play button. And I'm kind of sitting here going, you guys, I'm. I mean, I don't think we left the entire cut of all of my interaction with him in the video, but what happened was he won it, fair and square, yeah. and I asked for it, and he was like, no, and then I explained that I was the one who started that channel, and he was like, oh, no problem, man, take it. He seemed cool. He was totally cool in about the, it. In the little bit that I saw, he seemed cool. And so I had a couple minutes between being on the auction floor and then going to the front where we were gonna pick it up to kind of think about it. And I went like, he was really cool about this. What happened with him was he was with a crappy MCN back when he crossed his 100,000 threshold. So he's got his gold button already, but he was with a crappy MCN that for whatever reason, he got lost in the shuffle and he wasn't able to claim his silver play button. Yeah. So he just wanted one so that he could rebrand it, not because he didn't earn it, but because he never got his that he did earn. And I was like, you know what? At the end of the day, I've got in my fantastic studio with yeah. my amazing staff, three silver play buttons on the wall. And this, two gold. And not to mention the two gold play buttons. And he was so cool about it. Like if he wasn't really cool about it and he was like, you know, yeah, man, I, you know, I, I think I should have it. But he wasn't like that at all. If he wasn't cool about it, I would have I would have wanted to fight harder for it. But he was just such a nice guy that I thought it was hard to. Yeah. I thought it was the right thing to do. I understood your stance at the time, but yeah, I would have tried to pull something, like uh, making a getting that, him to make like a really similar channel name or. That would have been a better move. That would have been the pro move. But um, I I still have no regrets. I still feel good about how it went down, um, and if nothing else. We should, we, we, we should now make like try to make a channel that's like NCIX, but like change something very minor. It's hard. Was it NCIX or NCIX com? NCIX com and a yeah. big NCIX, a small com. Yeah. Yeah. Because I remember, I actually, it's funny. I, I remember having an argument internally about what we were going to call it because NCIX wasn't available for some reason. Okay. And I got questioned like quite a few times about why it wasn't NCIX dot com. Oh. And I was like because you can't have a period in the URL. And they were like, <laughs> are you sure? I'm like, yeah, yeah, you can't. <laughs> People are like, you should create a float plane NCIX plaque. So nice. honestly, the one that I really want is the gold one, but I'm gonna tell you something. The gold one is missing. Did someone take it from the office? Kind of looks that way. It wasn't me. Like, I, I, you're giving me that look. No, I actually had nothing to do with it. So I'm just, I'm just rapidly speculating yeah. privately who it might have been. So the rumor that I heard was that um, it, it was in the CEO's office, the last it was seen, and now it's not. So I would, and no, Riley doesn't have it. I asked Riley. He's a straight up dude. He would have told me. Yeah, so he was the last one left working on the NCIX Tech Tips channel. And he says he doesn't have it. And the last time he saw it, it was in the CEO's office. So, uh, oh, you know what? In other crazy important news um, that Jake did not put in the document. Wow. Um, you did a great job. There's been a lot of speculation that we will be acquiring the NCIX Tech Tips channel. And I can put that to rest once and for all. We are not acquiring the NCIX Tech Tips channel. RIP in peace. Yep. Um, not for lack of effort, but <laughs> disappointed. Ed. It will not be possible. <laughs> um, 
And so, yeah, uh, honestly, I'm, I'm pretty disappointed. I, I had a, um, I actually had a pretty rotten day that day. I had a bunch of things go wrong and I, I had the call that sort of was the nail in the coffin that I will not be getting it. Um, it is my belief that whoever is taking control of it is going to basically um, burn it to the ground and piss on the ashes according to the plan that they have described to me. Um, which is really disappointing because I put a lot of work into that. I mean, that's where I that's where I cut my teeth as a YouTuber. That's where you cut your teeth yep. as a YouTuber. It's kind of sad that we're not getting it. Um, I was pretty excited when we were talking about it. So I, I, I had felt very strongly that we should be allowed to buy it, but it's a little more complicated than that legally, and it's just not going to be possible. So... I mean, yeah, you know, I might as well be upfront with you guys. The only way we were going to get it was if we bought NCIX, which might seem like a great idea on paper, but it's uh, not. No. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> I was trying to be diplomatic. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, um, it would include the domain, the sophisticated inventory management and backend software. Oh, yes. Yes, definitely. Sophisticated. <laughs> yes. The very not cobbled together backend management system. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, the trademarks, the copyrights, uh, the intellectual property, including their fantastic mobile app. Duh. Um, mm -hmm. uh, basically, the the untarnished brand. Oh, oh, absolutely. The, the nobody's warning where their shipments are. The fantastic relationships that um, that that brand will inspire with potential suppliers. Owing people money and then never giving it to them is a really great way to establish trust. Now. Um, I mean, to be cl no, you wouldn't acquire the debt. So this is this is interesting. So the way that it works with the bankruptcy proceedings is that these assets are being liquidated uh, by the bankruptcy trustee. So the funds are not actually going to the original owner. The funds are going to the creditors, meaning that even if let's say NCIX owed you oh I don't know six million dollars hypothetical number. Um, no, no, not me, someone else. But it's not hypothetical, it's real. Um, <laughs> let, let's say NCIX would do $6 million. And let's say at the auction that we attended and through the sale of the, uh, the domain and the intellectual property and all that, that they managed to raise, I don't know, let, let's use a realistic number, $2 million. Your $6 million, which is only one-fifth of the total debt, this is all, this is all leaked out there, um, of your six million, you would get one fifteenth of that, whatever that works out to, like three hundred k. Oh, so I thought they had lines. to go banks first. So right, assuming it all went out equally. Yeah. Um. So so some people are going to have more robust contracts. Yeah. That will entitle them to being paid first. And um, a lot of the time, as far as I know, and I could be totally wrong here, but I think that usually results in. Banks so the first. new owners. Fair and square own the the domain, the, the 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 server infrastructure, whatever it is that they've paid the trustee for, and there's no debt associated with it. But life is rarely that simple. And if I was, oh, I don't know, let's say Corsair, who is owned a million dollars, did I say owned or owed? <laughs> it's I, kind I of the same owned. thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, dang! Rough. rough. Um, it's a Corsair who's owed a million Ugh. bucks. Do I engage with this brand again? Would you? Even if it was under new management? I'd be salty. And like the thing is, if I was a hardware company, um, I, I would look at this going like, okay, last time you guys didn't make it, you're going into the exact same market with the exact same inventory stuff, with the exact same buildings, with the exact, the exact same, same website, with less storefronts. With probably dramatically harmed SEO dramatically harmed SEO because everything's going to be about you being bankrupt. Site uh, traffic. A huge amount of customers that yep. never received shipments of possibly our products and then got upset with us potentially because yep. of that. 
Like I, I wouldn't really want to touch. Like it. I'd be, I'd be like, this corpse is in the ground. Especially. If Why you're, am I trying to perform CPR? Like, and it, especially if you're a GPU company. Yeah. If your company's shipping GPUs, you can sell them immediately to, to anyone. anyone. Why would you? And here's the thing: NCIX has been effectively out of business for so long that. You know, it doesn't take a long time for a gap to be filled. Canada Computers yeah. came in and yeah. opened up stores in NCIX's old locations. Yeah. Memory Express, um, I don't know if you know this, but I don't know if anyone knows this. Hold on. Uh, one second. Okay, good. So, yeah, this is... This is a thing that is definitely very public. That's Memory Express's <laughs> website. It's everywhere. So it's like literally everywhere. Um, but Memex is going to be opening up a new store. Um, I know that I have we're gone gonna be there. to their Langley location I'm be there. like three or four times since NCX closed in Langley. And how, how hurt are you that you have to go somewhere slightly different? Uh, it's ever so slightly more difficult to get to. But it's also sort of on the way to work, so the parking's a little annoying. So yeah, so that's the thing is they've been out of the game for three months. What incentive yeah. is there for anyone to go back? Because you don't. Okay, main... MX's website looks like 1998. Did you ever go to NCIX's? <laughs> Canada Computers isn't much better. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean at least. Okay, I'm gonna have to double check this, but at least to my knowledge, Memory Express doesn't hide the per location inventory the way that NCIX started doing over the last few years. Like, was that or was that not an incredibly that was so annoying. frustrating experience yeah. where it wouldn't actually show you what was in stock? Yeah, no, it's right here. Like, it's just like, okay, here's how many in this region are in each store. Online stores, different individuals. And stores. actually, this. I don't know how 1998 this is. No, this is this, this is, is not 1998. Like it's like 2008. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, way back machine and CIX. Oh. Like, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Like, let's just let's just let's just uh. Let let's ha let's have a look. Let's let's actually go. Okay, we can't go to 1998. Let's go to 1999. Okay. Go to 1999, my friends. Here we go. May the 8th, 1999. One snapshot. Hold on. Uh, oh, no. This this was like, wow. It archived a broken page. That's that's interesting. That's okay. 2000 looks more promising. Here we go. Okay, that looks that looks more promising. What? What you doing? What you doing, Wayback Machine? Wayback Machine is the only way to access NCIX now. Can you believe that? Isn't that crazy? Well, if it if it does. Well, like if it does, yeah. Okay, three snapshots. Come on, man. You know you can tell this show doesn't have a producer because stuff like this wouldn't happen. There we go. Okay. Uh, so that. Wait, what? Wait, no, that's this not. This is modern. This, yeah. This is 2018. These are like brand new drives. This is 2018, February. Okay, well, whatever. Way okay, back. well, still, I mean, we can still look at what NCIX has looked like at the Jump end. Jump on there. Click somewhere on there. On here? Yeah. Let's just go like here. Man, way back is slow. Okay, so this is 2004. This would have been like... Wow, this would have been like the prime time of me shopping there as an actual customer. Remember Celestica? <laughs> yeah, actually. Remember Soltech? I definitely remember Soltech. Remember AMD? Oh, wait, they made oh, it. Oh. They made it. They're back, baby. <laughs> Barely. What else we got? OCZ? Remember OCZ memory? I think I owned one of these. Dang. But no, okay, maybe not that one. 510B, 500 $100? bucks. With that VGA video? VGA, suckers! Okay, I think I owned one of those, but like years later. All right, anyway, I forget what we were even talking about. Um, right, I wouldn't buy NCIX. <laughs> Unless the price was basically what I would have paid for the YouTube the channel. The plaque. <laughs> now, tell that me this. 
I have had more than one person pitch me internally that if we were to buy the NCIX brand, yeah. So what, first one thing, do you think suppliers would take the NCIX brand seriously if it was me running it? Actually, yeah. And if we were to buy it, should we become a system integrator? Ooh. I wonder what Twitch chat thinks of this. I think you'd have to do it really well. Well, the idea would be that like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to go crazy. Like, my perfect system builder would probably be closer to Puget than to, like, I main gear. I expected that. Yeah. I, I, by really well, I didn't mean, like, hard light water cooling. I meant, like, very low amounts of issues. Yes. Like, robustness would have to be, like, way up there, which Puget, yeah, they've got that. They test after their testing, which is pretty yep. crazy. Um, but, like, just because of the public-facingness of this attachment company, You'd have to, yeah. You'd have to be quite careful. Yeah, it, it would, it would, it would be, it would be one of those things where you know every customer service issue has the potential to go viral, you know. And 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 my biggest issue actually is just that there's the potential for people to perceive our hardware choices in the NCIX PC division as being influenced or or influencing the media side of it. So I think there's a reason that nobody's ever really crossed the, that, yeah. those lines, except me. Yeah. I was already doing this. And yeah. it's, it's hilarious because you see so many people hearkening for the good old days when Linus wasn't biased because he worked at a computer store that was trying to sell you stuff. <laughs> and I'm kind of sitting here going, oh, man. Like, like it's, not, it's not biased, but you could certainly find an ulterior motive in there if you dug deep enough. LCIX? LCX, no. Linus Computer. Inc. Inc. Extreme. X. X, because <laughs> X Factor. Um, yeah, so I don't know, man. Um, I'm, I'm hoping to hear back today about just sort of like the update, but my, my name's out of the hat. I'm, I'm not going to be able to... I'm not going to be able to get my hands on the channel. I had the really chat, hoped to. The chat is chanting LCIX. LCIX, yes. <laughs> Lordy. Um, yes, bring looks that. Like, it does look bring like that. licks. <laughs> our, that... co our computers don't just suck. They lick. <laughs> Hard. That might go okay. That might go okay. Go back to like mid-90s advertising. Like just our <laughs> branding just being completely ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay, as far as I can tell, the only way system integrators make any money is through MDF programs with brands like Intel and NVIDIA. NVIDIA probably. I don't think Intel would give us any <laughs> money to talk about how our computers lick hard. Yeah, that might be a little bit of a problem. Intel's a little on the conservative side when it comes to brand messaging. Yeah. To be clear, oh, before man. people freak out, we're not talking anything about politics at all. Um, we're just talking about... Speaking of how we actually intend to continue running our business and making money. Yeah. Squarespace. Oh, I thought you were going to do the burger flipping robot. No, we'll get into that. We actually haven't done any of the topics on the dock. We were just messing with you, Jake, but it ended up happening. Uh, so Squarespace <laughs> is the, the place to go to build your own beautiful functional website. With Squarespace, your project might not take 17 months before you launch an alpha. Wow. With Squarespace, you just pick one of their gorgeous templates. Wow. They've got 24-7 tech support. It starts at just $12 a month. The sites are super stable and all of the templates feature. <laughs> I'm not sure if he's running away to hide or going in to get a heavy object. Oh, so they look great on any device. With Squarespace's cover pages feature, you can set up a beautiful one-page online presence in minutes and everyone can now publish content in the Apple News format directly from their Squarespace blog module, making it available to millions of potential viewers. Start a trial with no credit card required at squarespace.com slash when you can't hit me on a live stream because everyone will see you do it. So I might end up streaming forever because that's how I'm going to stay alive. And you know how else I'll stay alive? With Savage Jerky. Thanks to Savage Jerky, I will never have to stop the stream to eat. <laughs> With their maple buffalo bacon, not to mention their other fantastic flavors like traditional. You into the traditional uh, yeah. today? I'm down. 
Get, Moho, get out of here. You're not getting, you got a whole thing last week. Um, I haven't tried the sriracha teriyaki in a little while. Uh, savage jerky, ha no, get, it. don't feed the animals. <laughs> That's what they tell you at the park. If you feed the animals, they never stop coming back. <laughs> Um, they've got tons of great flavors of jerky. Their goal was to make a snack that's tasty and not bad for you. You want to give me they've the got, crazy one? They've got 13. Yeah, you want to do it today? Yeah. Sure, man. Um, so a, a bunch of people in chat said, eat the hot one. And I was like, all right. All right. I'll do it. I'll take one for the team. Wow. I don't think they actually sent us much hot stuff this time around. Oh, yeah. Never mind. There's the Reaper. Done. Don't fear the Reaper, baby. Um... So the goal is to create a snack that was full of flavor and not bad for you. They've got 15 different flavors, all the way from mild ones like the sriracha teriyaki and the maple buffalo bacon, all the way up to super hot stuff made of Carolina Reapers, um, ghost peppers. Uh, they've also got a spice rub. Um, they make barbecue sauce, hot sauce, and you can use offer code LTT. Oh man, my mouth, my mouth is watering. To save 10% on all their products at savagejerky.com. I haven't had that one in a while. I actually forgot about that one. That one's pretty good, too. <laughs> this what? isn't going to go well. Just wait for another 10 hours, and we'll see how it's going. Mm. I actually do find in that department. I've never had that result that you're talking about. Eat four or five pieces. No, I'm good. <laughs> I'm going to keep my record going. Fresh books. Speaking of keeping records... FreshBooks is the uh, accounting solution for small business owners and freelancers. It does a lot more, too, than just help you create and send slick-looking invoices quickly. You can track your time with their timesheet function. You can manage your expenses. You can keep track of who owes you what. And they've even got a feature that allows you to see when your clients look at your invoice for the first time. You can take payments on your terms, including the ability to accept deposit through the platform and the mobile app available for both Android and iOS has the full features of the desktop app so you can take all of the functionality with you on the go. If you ever have any questions, you can reach out to FreshBooks to an actual human. Um, no phone tree, no escalations, just answers. So visit freshbooks.com slash when and enter when in the how did you hear about us section to get a free 30-day trial. Yeah. How you doing over there, bud? I'm all right. I'm, I'm okay. Uh, oh, LTX. You're going to be at LTX, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. LTX is going to be back this summer. It's July 14th. I'm actually 14th. super stoked. It was really fun last time, and we're cranking it up. We're cranking it, like, way up to 11. Yeah. We're going to be in a much bigger venue. I'm going to go ahead and throw the link in the Twitch chat here. Guys, check it out. Well, I'll be at LTX if I, if I don't uh, die right now. Yeah. Um, so Ooh. we're going to be at the Richmond Olympic Oval. It's going to be huge. Uh, it's a meetup slash tech convention. Um, the idea is to keep the focus on experiences. So we want you guys to get hands-on with cool tech through fun games and tutorials. And there's going to be a larger focus on PC gaming this year. Tickets start at 35 Canadian rubles, and you can check them out at ltxexpo.com. Hopefully, we'll see uh, we'll see a lot of people there. Like last year, it actually went surprisingly well for a first attempt. Like that's actual that's an actual picture from last year. Yeah. We framed it really cleverly, so you can't see yes. all the empty chairs up here. But like that was fine because we, we never intended to have people up there anyway. Yeah. No one wants to sit in the stands. Yeah. They want to rush the stands, to try to touch your hands. <sighs> Like some Screaming yeah. Usher fans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Spaghetti. Yeah. Spaghetti fans. Um, Milk mm. fans. This one's good. <laughs> Milk fans. <laughs> Milk the fans. Uh, full plane. Mm. No, we'll get to that later. I got to do my thing. Should I do that later or now? Oh, yes. Oh, right. Float plane news. Okay. Why don't you talk float plane news while I show off the site that totally works. Most that's of the time. Full <laughs> of videos that people, well. The vast majority of the time, actually. Yeah, so check this out. So d just just recently, this this uh, got working. So you can click <laughs> up here. Got working. Got, <laughs> magically, magically. Um, yeah. So you can click up here, and you can see all the videos in order from all the channels you subscribe to, like Bitwit Ultra and Linus Tech Tips, who are currently the only creators on the platform. Um, credit card payments work. Yeah. PayPal is still pending some stuff with um, our Braintree. payment processor, yeah. Braintree. 
Um, but we are hoping to be able to accept both through the platform. We have had no actual issues with credit card payments yet. Really? Oh, no cool. actual issues. There's a, there's a lot of placeholders and stuff still. Like this, a load of them. This image is like not that great. Um, no. But I can show you guys the videos that are up there. We've got an, in, uh, an Intel. We've got uh, fast as possible on Intel's CPU letters. You know, like X, K, U, T, Y, all those yeah. letters that come at the end of the H names. H, U. Max builds her first PC together with me. Much hilarity ensues. Are you like getting her to do most of it? Oh yeah. Nice. Oh yeah, she does the vast majority of it. I barely cool. touch it. Nice. Um, we've got a float plane exclusive testing the Nvidia Shield from the NCIX auction. <laughs> This case is unbelievable. Um, like, actually amazing. It's like this build hey, is gorgeous. Hey, that was Good job. Yay. It didn't do what it did last week. Yeah. No, I know. It's Scanning is still slightly slower? Well, no. I think it was actually our connection here. That would make sense. Um, because uh, Johnny came in earlier this week and kind of reset everything, updated all the firmware, and I haven't been having buffering issues on Floatplane or YouTube this week. Okay, cool. Yeah. So this is a gorgeous video. It's it's worth a watch. Let's go ahead and go back. Usually I'd hope I'd be over it by now. It's still going. Not an act. Uh, <laughs> uh, this one went up on YouTube today. This one went up already. This is a fast as possible. You can't really tell because the thumbnail is footage from the LTT video. Anyway, don't worry about it. Gaming on the iMac Pro, how bad can it be? You can update these. No, I know you can. Mm. I just haven't done okay. it. Um, Super ultra wide monitor, dank or dumb? I think we all know the answer. Actually, I think everyone, the funny thing about that is it's very polarizing. I think everybody knows their own answer and it's not the same answer as other people. And it's just drastic. Yeah, it's, I've had yeah. people talk to me about how that is the most amazing thing of all time. Me too. And they can't believe nobody ever thought of that. Like it's crazy. Um, so sorry, what was your news? Uh, I'm uh, full planes hiring. Oh, are we? Yeah. I lightly mentioned it to you earlier. Uh, looking for someone well, attention. with like node, angular, sales, waterline kind of experience in that realm. Um, yeah, hit me up. I don't have a specific like link for you to go to right now. You can tweet me. There will be a link. Do you have a specific budget in mind? We can talk about it offline. I do actually, but yeah. All right. Um, so this will bring the team up to how many then? That'll be six, five. Six, five? Well, okay. it depends on how you. Depends Six with me, it, seven with you, eight with Yvonne, right. nine with, don't know if name is public. Yeah, no, well, let's, let's not count me and Yvonne then. Are we so counting? Six, then. We're counting you. Yeah, yeah, Okay. so it would be six. So it'd be six. It's crazy how many people thought that we were just going to be like doing this with one person and Luke when you we did your initial call for- time. Okay, yes, but that, that... That was never the plan, though. Yeah, and, and well, that initial call video, we, were, we already had one person. So we were going up from there, but yeah. Uh, we're, doing, we're doing pretty well right now. We're pushing forward. Right now, though, we're, we're in a situation where we're doing a lot of reacting. So I want to increase the team size a little bit so we can push forward. Because we're, we're reacting to some bugs, we're fixing some things, we're doing some user yeah. suggestions and stuff, but I want to keep pushing forward with the mainline stuff. Yeah, we've got a really good roadmap. We just need to make sure we don't fall into that trap where we've got a great roadmap that we never end up working and on. And we, we do keep feature creeping. Basically, everything feature creeps, and our stuff is feature creeping as well. But, um, yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah, being from Canada or being from the States with a related degree is quite important because I want to move you here. Yeah, so remote work, no. Remote work for three months, yes. <laughs> While you're on probation, cool. Once you're off probation, no, come here. Get on a plane. Yeah. Um, all right, why don't we talk about some actual news that's in the actual doc. This was posted by Master Disaster on the forum, and the original article here is from TechCrunch. Flippy, the robot hamburger chef, goes to work. So this is one year after announcing a partnership with Caliburger and Miso Robotics' resident chef graduated to graduated Hamburger University and started flipping burgers in an actual restaurant. So this is an AI-enabled burger flipping robot arm thing. It uses thermal imaging and image recognition to tell which burgers need flipping. It can handle 12 burgers at a time. 
And it's not 100% independent. The worker has to bring in patties and take the cooked ones away, uh, apply cheese, assemble sandwiches. Actually, it doesn't sound that that. I think it's not that, that great. Point. But the idea was that for your $60,000 per flippy yeah. each, yeah. and your 20% uh, annual recurring maintenance fee, so 12 grand a year, you would get more functionality down the road, like the ability to chop, deep fry, grill, or add seasoning and cheese to patties. What drives me nuts is how can it not refill the patty selection? Like what? Know. Like even, even, if, even if workers had to bring like stacks of patties separated by paper, whatever, whatever, I don't know, and just like, like put it into a thing? Yeah. You'd think they'd have a burger hopper. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it was designed to make up for the cost with decreased wait times, better consistency, decreased food waste, and then obviously, eventually, a reduction in staff. But wait, there's more. The original article from BBC.com. Burger flipping robot taken offline after one day on the job. Yes, the burger flipping robot lasted exactly as long as that stoner guy that I hired when I was running my painting business. Oh, I thought you meant. All right. Uh, one day. <laughs> no, this guy was hilarious. So was the other one that I'm talking about. But yes. This I one agree. was more hilarious. Okay, get this. Okay. So, one of the most time consuming aspects of painting is ladder movements. Okay. Go, getting up and down the ladder, moving the Shuffling ladder, it over. Um, getting your bucket and your paint back together and getting up. Okay. That's one of the things that takes the most amount of time. So when I see someone, instead of putting, so instead of putting the ladder close to the wall and using your whole wingspan, both hands, when I see someone putting a ladder four feet away from the wall, leaning in like this, painting with one hand, like pushing themselves back out onto the ladder, and like, I was just. <laughs> So My, this is one of those, like, I, I don't know the proper name for it, but, like, you're not leaning the ladder against the no, house. No, it's just yet. a step stool. Yeah. He was just leaning himself That's against the ridiculous. house for, like, that no apparent reason. actually My no crew sense. chief wanted to kind of try and make it work. She was really, she's a good person. I'm horribly um, bad at uh, painting, and that sounds really dumb. But, I was actually, and, like, we were desperate. Like, this was back in, I don't know, 2000... Six. Six? Yeah, probably around 2006, 2000. Yeah, it was probably 2006. When, like, the economy was really good. The 2008 crash hadn't really happened yet. Like, it was, this was a time, this was a period of time where getting, walking into a subway, you might only hope to have your burger made correctly because people were, like, desperate. They were hiring just, like, anyone, no matter how qualified they were for anything. And it was really hard to find people, but I was just like, no, we can't do this. Um, so, 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 right, Flippy. Flippy was supposed to be able to cook 2,000 burgers a day. But after one day, Flippy was taken offline to be upgraded to work faster. Left with a little sign saying he'd be cooking soon. The employees that work with him are also being trained to help Flippy work faster. Um, it's likely that this is due to the increased volume at the store due to the news of Flippy being deployed. So it's That's not like not this is all bad much. news. 2,000 a day sounds like a lot, but when you break it down... It's really actually not that much. It's not that crazy. Um, and you see in the video, like, his flipping thing is very... <laughs> like, it's slow. The weird know. thing about it is, like... You know, what about... Uh, what's that robot called? The four-legged one that you can, like, kick and it doesn't fall over? Yeah, I don't know, but it's Boston Dynamics. Yeah, like, that thing's been around for six years? Like, this does not seem very sophisticated or good. Why does it cost $60,000? Uh, I'm not this. There's, I'm sure they're not mass making them. That's why. This one's nuts. It's oh, crazy. is this a new? Yeah. Oh wow, Boston Dynamics has a new robot. That's like kind of news, right? It's sure. It's been news for a while. We're kind of late. It. Oh well, yeah, from like. It can open a door, and you can like screw with it while it tries to open the door, and it'll correct, and it'll brace, and it does all this other kinds. Of, why is it lagging? Oh, there I don't we go. Know. So it'll like bring an arm thingy out. I don't know where the arm actually comes from. Oh, there's the one with the arm. Right, this one has to let the other one through the door. These guys are <coughs> trippy. Like, this is scary stuff. This is like straight out of Portal. And then he like braces the door on his leg, 
gets the arm around the door, and then pulls it open, lets the other one through. And then I think what we're going to see after this is when they try to interfere. Because Boston Dynamics is no, all it's, about that. It's over. Oh, no, okay. Is uh, this one testing robustness? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's fine. I mean, that's like. Anyway, that, the point I was trying to make is like, I don't really understand why Flippy. There's crazy robots out there. This feels like a really advanced, like, project that someone on YouTube made. I don't know. I'm sure it's more complicated than that. I'm sure the thermal sensing stuff is actually quite complicated. Right. Like the like the robot vision that they've programmed into this is probably pretty cool. And there's probably some pretty like uh, some pretty onerous sort of safety, health and safety certifications that uh, they've that probably too. had to go through. Okay. That sounds yeah, yeah. expensive. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, at any rate, um, why don't we move on to the next topic? So, oh, you're right. So humans, um, your jobs are not safe. Except no. for now they are, because yeah. Flippy is not that great. But um, someone will make a good Flippy. This is pretty or crazy. So this was posted by Master Disaster on the forum, but uh, and the original po the original article is is this like from our forum? Looks like one of the users of our forum blanked out their personal information and said basically, dear taxpayer, Newegg has provided the Department of Revenue Services records of your online purchases. They put a dash in online because. Apparently, they still live in 2002. Super old. Yeah. yeah. Uh, during taxable years 2014, 2015, and 2016, according to these records, you made purchases in at least one of these years but were not charged Connecticut sales tax. Therefore, you owe tax on the items. Tax, interest, penalty. Penalty. Total amount due, $103.10. Now, this is based on only spending about 1000 bucks. So anyone who was a heavy buyer or, like, maybe – was the, the coordination point for group buys for their friends, for example, or like regularly bought systems and built them for other people, if they didn't go and pour through the Connecticut tax code to determine that Newegg should have been paying them tax or should have been submitting, uh, charging them tax and then submitting it to the state of Connecticut, they could be on the hook for thousands and thousands of dollars. American online tax law is basically as far as I know, actually the worst out of anyone. It's pretty broken. And like the average person, I don't think the average person should be blamed for not being aware of this stuff. Like on the one hand, yes, officially, according to tax laws here in Canada too, you should pay tax even if you weren't charged tax on the transaction. For example, if I were to um, buy something on Craigslist, or if I were sorry, if I were to sell something on Craigslist, I'm supposed to pay yeah. income tax on the uh, the money that I made. And if I was to sell something on Craigslist, I am supposed to, I think, over a certain amount. So if I was doing it regularly, I am supposed to collect provincial and general sales tax and submit it to the appropriate governing bodies on behalf of the buyer. But like going all the way back to 2014 to 2016. And then just sending letters to everyone? Wow. No subpoena or warrant was involved. The DRS just sent Newegg a letter. They complied, which, I mean, yeah. Do, would they have a legal justification to not? Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's people's personal information, right? Like, that's pretty BS. Yeah. Um, man. Well, how would they Newegg be able to mail only them? Sent the amounts? How would they be able to mail them with their so personal information? Name and the address, I guess. Yeah, so name, address, and Yeah, so, okay, so apparently the DRS submitted the names and addresses and asked Newegg for the amounts. Oh. So, okay, I can see Newegg supplying that, but I don't know, man. Like, this is one of those things where y this is not the consumer's fault. NH and Ma Massacre said, I'm screwed. I spent over 13K on Newegg. Are you from Connecticut? I think you have to. I think this only applies to people in this Connecticut. This only applies to Connecticut for now, but this is a can of worms. Yeah. Because even here in Canada, the way that the taxation has worked for online purchases has been a little bit complicated at times. And as far as I know, nothing was ever done retroactively. And as There's far as I know, 
when the laws changed back in 2008, 2009, some, somewhere around there, when they introduced, harm, introduced harmonized sales tax, yeah. the onus was on the retailer to deal with it. Yeah, you have and to we were the ones who were in trouble. Yeah. And that seems a lot more fair to me than putting it on, you know, individual, yeah. you know, Joe Average in Connecticut. No, I completely agree. I, um, crap, what was I going to say? Right, so a lot of tax law was made before it was reasonable to buy something in one area when you are in another area. And then when that started becoming more popular, it was mostly like calling in to order stuff. And that was such low volume that nobody matter. cared. And even once you started buying things on the internet, most people were pretty skeptical about buying things on the internet. And there wasn't a lot of that going on. And then Amazon blows up and all these other sites blow up. And now a lot of people are doing a pretty hefty portion, possibly most of their shopping on the internet. Yep. Now it's a big deal. Because, I mean, remember, it's not like we're in a situation where the individual states are just like flush with cash. Yeah. So if they can find a way to get, you know, anywhere between a couple of percent and a couple more than that percent of every transaction that takes place online for items coming into their state, I mean, if you think about it, those items don't get to the door without a truck driving on a road that theoretically uh, the state maintains. Like, Someone said, uh, Luke, use tax covers out-of-state purchases. I'm assuming they mean U.S. tax. Not really. Um, this is... Use tax. No, he said U.S. E. Oh, okay. Either way, it doesn't. Not, not in all cases. Um, and there's really weird situations where, like, uh, for, for if you're talking about digital stuff, if, if, if the company you're buying something from has a server in your state, that's Nexus. So they have a, like, location there, which changes how it all works. It's a very, it's very complicated. And it varies depending on whether it's a digital goods or service or a physical item. Yeah. And like it varies per state, per county in some places. Like yep. it's, it's, it's actually US ridiculous. tax is extremely complicated. All right. Speaking of things that are extremely complicated, my feelings about this uh, latest bit of news. The original article here. We're still correcting here? about use tax. It doesn't matter. There's other things that apply. Sorry that I got that part wrong. There is still other stuff that applies. McAfee acquires VPN company, which I actually didn't realize was Canadian, was. Uh, Tunnel, Bear, Tunnel yeah. Bear. Dun, dun, dun. Terms of the deal have not been disclosed. Um, McAfee says it plans to integrate Tunnel Bear's technologies into their own VPN products that I've never heard of until now, SafeConnect. Apparently, Tunnel Bear will also continue to work on its own products under its own brand. According to the report, Tunnel Bear is a profitable company, so presumably McAfee paid a pretty penny for it. Uh, just a little bit of history. McAfee was acquired by Intel in 2011. It's McAfee. McAfee? Whatever. Um, Intel rebranded it to Intel Security, and then it was later split into a new company with the old McAfee, McAfee, whatever name. There's no A. But... In partnership with private equity firm TPG. So this is their second acquisition since becoming a separate company again. And um, so here's where we're at on this. As you guys probably know, uh, Tunnel Bear is a, um, a pretty, has been a long time oh, supporter right. of the show. Yeah. Um, so we've reached out to them for comment. I don't think we've heard back yet. I'm actually not, not sure if we've heard back yet. But we would, we would love to, uh, we would love to hear from our community uh, what they think of this news. So one key change is now that Tunnel Bear is owned by an American interest, they will have to comply with some American laws, as far as I know. Um, I'm gonna so that's one difference that there might be to the service yeah. and their sort of way of operating. Yeah, I'm going to chime in slightly here. Um, Canada has a lot of crazy privacy laws, too. Um, the U.S. privacy laws are more well documented, uh, but if you want to have some fun, Google Spy Palace. It'll bring up some Canadian stuff. <laughs> Interesting articles. So, yeah. 
and five eyes. So that was some interesting news. Um, in other interesting news, this was posted by Sonari on the forum. The original article is from overclock.net. Modders have apparently gotten Coffee Lake working on 100 and 200 series chipsets. So far, the Core i3-8100 has been tested working completely on a 100 series board. Mm, well, apparently multiple 100 series boards. And what else do we have here? So Little Hill contributed in adding the Coffee Lake CPU microcode and suggestions of using correct ME version to boot the CPU. Root user 123 fixed iGPU by extracting Coffee Lake iGPU vBIOS on the latest GOP driver from Sonics and updating the vBIOS and GOP driver. <laughs> wow. Contributed in uh, Desanke, contributed in booting 6-core CPU on MSI Z270 motherboard and giving lots of assistance in solving problems. LSW contributed in testing and writing guides. MavX solved the issue with the PCIe 16X not working and CPU voltage readout fixes when using Coffee Lake CPUs. Very, very interesting. Nice eBay GPU ads you got going on there. Because of higher power limits... This is a quote here. I would not suggest this mod with i5 and i7 K series CPUs. So this comes back to, I'm not talking to you, Siri. Go away. Uh, so this comes back to the speculation that took place when Intel said they would not be supporting Coffee Lake on 100 and 200 series. But I'm going to go through Jake's notes here first as a courtesy. Um, Oh, actually, that was the first thing in his notes. Good job, Jake. So here was what they said. It might have worked for the most part, but it didn't work well enough or reliably enough for Intel to allow this compatibility to make it to the market. So they software and BIOS locked off the compatibility. Uh, most of this was due to Coffee Lake's different power setup. Um, it was not necessarily that the board didn't have enough power delivery, but the board's power delivery is, is distributed over more pins to better support Coffee Lake's six core chips like the 8700K. So WCCF Tech reported that ground pins went from 377 to 391, and power pins went from 128 to 146. Something a lot of people don't know is that on particularly a brand new CPU, um, like I found a really good, I forget why I was looking at this, but um, i7-920 pin map. Um, cool. This blog, re-engine blog, check this out. I forget why I was looking at this, but this is a map uh, posted on reengine.org where this guy or gal mapped out what all of the different pins are and then color coded them. So you can see here, all this green stuff is memory controller. Um, all this blue stuff is QPI data. All the gray stuff. So like 70, 80% of what's in here, a bunch of this in here, here, uh, probably a good 50% of what's in here. All that gray stuff is reserved pins. And those reserved pins might be for different SKUs that have more hardware in them. For example, uh, this is a Bloomfield. And so it was architecturally very similar to the um, contemporary Xeons. So those Xeons would have had an additional QPI link that would have taken up uh, probably, oh, let's go back here, uh, probably all the gray ones here. Yeah. That would have been the other QPI link for the other CPU that would have been needed. But there's still all this other stuff. And a lot of the time, those reserved pins are just in case Intel decides to do like a, uh, a new CPU with, oh, I don't know, maybe more cores, for example. They can use those for something. Um, so this is just an example of them utilizing reserved pins in order to add more power. So going back to our notes here, the modders say that the pinout doesn't matter because they're just left disconnected because those pins are reserved on KB Lake, except for two, which you can just cover with tape. So the extra pins offer about 8% greater impedance. So theoretically, lower power chips like the i3-8100 are fine, but you may have issues with overclockable, higher core count, or higher TDB chips. There's a screenshot here of an 8700K working. So you can check this out on a presumably MSI board. But no actual evidence of it running correctly or stably. So... There you go. It's exactly what 
I don't know if Intel ever publicly said it, that was it, but that's what we understood. It's exactly what we knew it was. It's not that it can't work, it's that it can't work well enough, so... Unless you try super, super hard and use an i3-8100, which is probably not worth the work. So that's where we're at on that. Yeah. What else we got here? There's All right, you want to talk about the Fortnite thing. thing? There's not a lot to say here, but I think it's kind of interesting. PUBG has been rocking for a long time, and a lot of people in the community, including myself, are pretty unsatisfied with how they've been kind of doing a lot of stuff. Tell for the uninitiated why. Uh, their servers are super garbage. Their downtimes that they choose for maintenance, even when they schedule it ahead of time, is in like prime time for North America, which is pretty rough, and they do all the servers. There's a huge amount of uh, hacking, and that's not being dealt with to a satisfactory level, including hacks uh, like something called ESP, which is like, uh, do you remember the Pokemon Go cheating stuff where people would get like a website and it would show where all the Pokemon are? Mm -hmm. You can get that except for PUBG. So it shows you where everyone on the map is, and you can get it running on an external computer so you don't even need to have it on your computer, so there's no way to detect it. Because you can just VPN the other device, they'd have no idea it's going to your network. Right. So they, even if they did find a way to track it somehow, which I don't think they could, then you can just VPN and there's no way for them to check it anyways. Because just so basically it has computer. like fundamental flaws. It's a huge, there's a lot of issues. Um, there, there's, there's things that piss a lot of people off. Uh, and the, it, yeah, they, they, they took all this money that they got for having a successful game and instead of when what a lot of people think needed to happen is throwing all of that towards development of the main game, they developed like a mobile game and then uh, they, they did this huge push to get it onto Xbox and like all this kind of stuff instead of developing the core thing. They had a version 1.0 released which was, as far as I can tell, a giant publicity stunt because it was garbage. There were still huge amounts of issues in the game. Uh, like, it's, it's, it's been really frustrating. You drop in, you have to parachute in. I know you haven't really played, I don't know how much you know about it. Uh, you have to parachute in, and you'll, you, sometimes you have to stand there for a little while and wait for things to actually spawn, like loot. Sometimes it's there, who knows, it might not work. You try to parachute into the ground, uh, it might not let you out of the parachute. Then when it does, it might just kill you or do a whole bunch of damage, because it's like, oh, you fell. It's like, wouldn't have fallen if the game worked, thanks. Uh, there's huge rubber banding issues. For a huge amount of time, there's massive performance issues. There's still some performance issues, but not as much as there was before. Um, really, look, tell me how you really feel about it. Meanwhile, <laughs> and I'm not as into the gameplay, because I don't like the building aspects and stuff, but Fortnite right. released their Battle Royale mode after PUBG, running on the same engine, because they made it. <laughs> Um, and it's it's a uh, what a lot of people would classify a better overall experience. I'm, I'm not as into the gameplay because I don't like the building aspects. You have to like actively build walls and do all this weird stuff. And some of the fights are just ridiculous to watch because you just watch people like rapidly build walls and stairs and stuff like super 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 fast. And then like do one shot. Okay, it's over because you like somehow got an angle on them while they were rapidly building this thing too. I, yeah, I'm not super into the gameplay, but I'm kind of happy that it's beating out PUBG because I want them to smarten the heck up because I would rather play that game. It's just really frustrating sometimes. Anyways, I don't know how much the Twitch chat actually agrees with me. We should do a poll. Hell what yeah. do you like more, PUBG or um, All right. Fortnite? I'm on it. So I, I like playing PUBG more, but I get very angry when like I'll rubber band around a wall or I'll be like clearly behind something and die and it's not the other the other dude isn't hacking or anything it's just huge latency issues the the tick rate on the servers is garbage I don't remember what it is now but it was like 11 to 17 before really like it's it's really bad why this is something you know maybe you can explain this to me from a technical standpoint why run a crappy tick rate when everyone I think knows, it's, I think it's what would be better? Um, okay, so in like October, they were saying 17 hertz tick rate. Really? Yeah. How can you even play a competitive game like that? Yeah. Like, there's issues with the game, and the, yeah, a lot of it's just ignored. <sighs> More people are voting for Fortnite right now. It's really close, to be fair. 
Wow. These votes are coming really in really close. fast. And a lot of people are Like, voting. compared to most polls we run? Yeah. This is crazy. But then, you think about it, we're streaming on Twitch. <laughs> most of the time, we're not That's doing fair. gaming polls. That's fair. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's close, which I'm not surprised by. Right. But, but then Fortnite is edging out PUBG, which shouldn't be surprising. Exactly. And I, I, I prefer the gameplay style of PUBG and all this kind of stuff. There's just so many frustrating things. <sighs> Wish I had time to play games. I legitimately do. <sighs> so, in other news, game over for uh, drones. That's bad. A drone crashed in Arizona National Forest, starting a wildfire. <sighs> Something like 200 acres? 200 acres? That burned? 300, 300. acres. Over... 300 acres with 30 firefighters able to contain it within the day. That's how much it burned in a day. And it's unclear what kind of drone it was, but it caught fire when it crashed, setting fire to a grassland area called Kendrick Park. The pilot was identified and charged with starting a forest fire. Uh, lawmakers are pushing to criminalize drone flying in wildfire areas. So basically, you're not going to be able to fly a drone near a person, near an animal, near a vehicle, near a wildfire area, which is like, what isn't? Yeah. Um, a spokesperson for the forest said it is legal to fly a drone in the forest as long as it doesn't take off in a wilderness area and as long as there are no nearby wildfires. So I don't know how you're going to turn this into a criminal charge against the guy. Um... Oh, wait, no, okay, yeah, you can be, yeah, okay, so I get. is it negligence? I guess so? Because I think, I feel like you'd have to have precautions along the route, so if nothing else, you'd have to have, like, people out along the route, because I bet you film crews would still be able to get away with it. Interesting. Because they could have, like, crew around just in case the drone fell, you know? So... Here's another good one. Goodbye drones, goodbye porn? Um, Rhode Island is proposing a bill requiring internet service providers to block sexual content and not necessarily for the reason you might think. Because you would probably go, it's probably a think of the children. But what they really want is to get $20 from you, one time, so one time fee, $20 from you to be able to access pornography, which will give money to the state to help fund the operation of the Council on Human Trafficking. You have to send in a request in writing that you want it disabled. You have to present your ID to verify that you're older than 18. And you have to acknowledge <laughs> uh, receiving written warning regarding the danger associated with deactivating the filter. Wow. Yeah. So that's interesting. With current wording, it seems like the filters for illegal things like child porn would also be deactivated if you paid the fee. What? How does that help the problem that they're doing? Okay. I, nah. D completely regardless of the moral issues of blocking anything on the internet to any degree, whatever, whatever, whatever. Completely ignore all of that kind of stuff for now. Just look at the stance they're trying to make and the result that they're setting up. They don't line up. That, that's, that's completely what I'm confused about right now. <laughs> so, what? But that's they would have so a registry weird. of all the people who are on unlocked yeah unzipped which is just <laughs> <laughs> but that's just awkward and like it sounds like you have to maybe do it in person because that's be in writing you have to acknowledge that you've seen this form saying that you're a bad person essentially and you have to present your id it says present id not like so my understanding is that human trafficking and effectively slavery is actually a huge problem in the porn industry 
Okay. I don't do a ton of research on it. But, like, apparently people can end up, like, not so much in North America, I don't think, but people can end up signing contracts without fully understanding them that basically turn them into sex slaves. That sounds less likely in North America. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so I can understand the need to um, sort of investigate where this internet porn is coming from, the impact it's having, and if there are illegal activities going on that are driving it. But I don't think that um, like an internet censorship bill makes a ton of sense as the way to go about that. That seems sort of like a broader... Um, yeah. Once again, another topic that I'm really just not sure what to say about. I just don't understand. Like, is this the worst thought out thing ever? Like that that's the only thing that's the only conclusion I'm really coming to. Like if regardless of your stance on it, whether you're for it or against it, their approach is super confusing. Okay, so we've got people correcting me saying that bringing people into the into North America to act as slaves is still pretty common. Yeah, it's it's a little bit different though. So in North America, the way that typically this is my understanding, the way that the human trafficking game typically works is that you're relying on their very poor language skills and the fact that they don't oh, so understand the, to... the laws of the country yeah. in order to, to get themselves out of it. But that's not really what I was talking about. I was talking about situations where actually through legal contracts, um, you're creating situations where um, people are effectively being sexually assaulted at work every day, but they're contractually obligated to continue to do it. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So thanks for watching, guys. Um, this has been an interesting WAN show. We what will see you again next week. Show. Same bat time, same bat channel. Bye. This is messed up man stuff, man. It's just so weird. What a weird way to go. Yeah. Well, I think they're just like, I don't know. What are you gonna do? Ask, you know. Congress for funding to investigate sexual harassment. I mean, yeah. I heard, I heard that that was one of the White House's top priorities: stopping the sexual harassment. <laughs>